Hey guys, happy Wednesday. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Uh, recently, I've run into several people requesting uh, that I show how to set up Wallabag uh, on a Docker instance. Now, if you're not sure what Wallabag is, uh, basically it's a way that you can save web pages to read later. Uh, the thing about Wallabag though, is that it needs to run on an SSL in order to work. So uh, you're gonna need a, a domain name setup uh, and you're gonna need Nginx Proxy Manager. And it'd probably be good if you also had Cloudflare set up as well, uh, kind of going through the process process of following along with the rest of the, the series uh, that I've set up here, kind of start to finish. Uh, we've, we've purchased domain names, we've set up, uh, we've set up Nginx Proxy Manager, we have set up Cloudflare, we've done all of that. So if you followed along, you should be ready to go for this. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is jump over to my desktop and take a look at how to get this set up. So there is one other thing that I forgot to mention uh, that I wanted to bring up real quick before we move on, is that this will only work on desktop processors. This won't work on Raspberry Pi, unfortunately. Uh, this is just set up to be an, an x86, x64 processor uh, set up here. So if you're ever not sure about how to find out for yourself if a, a certain container or whatever is available for either desktop or Raspberry Pi, uh, all you've got to do is come over to um, their Docker, their hub.docker.com page, um, and then come over, find their tags. There may be multiple tabs across here. Find tags and scroll down, uh, and then it will say something like Linux slash AMD64. If it only says Linux slash AMD64, it won't work on a Raspberry Pi. It'll only work on a desktop processor. Um, it may also, uh, there may also be other tags uh, for uh, Raspberry Pi. So you may want to scroll through and see if there any of that is available. Uh, and it'll say, you know, ARM or ARM slash V6, V7, V8. Um, there'll be something in there that will uh, designate an ARM architecture for your processor. Uh, again, with this one, it only says Linux slash AMD64. So this one's only good on a desktop processor. So here we are on my desktop and we can see that uh, this is the official image from Wallabag. Uh, it was updated just over three weeks ago, so fairly recently. Uh, below that, we've got a little bit of uh, information about what Wallabag is. Like it says, it's a self-hosted application for saving web pages. Um, and it's free, it's open source, I believe, yep. And uh, so basically uh, below that, uh, it says the default login is Wallabag. We're gonna wanna keep note of that for later when we first get uh, to the login screen. These are the credentials that we're gonna use to get logged in. Now below that, there are a bunch of environmental variables uh, that you can uh, use. Some of them uh, you're gonna have to use. Some of them I think are, are optional, like two-factor authentication, uh, things like that. Uh, but a lot of this stuff we are going to use. Uh, just know that there are more that you can go in here and take a look at if you wanna do that. So uh, there are also a few different ways that you can run this. Uh, one is through SQLite uh, with uh, just a simple command here. Uh, we don't like to do command line stuff very often if we don't have to. Um, and in this case, we don't have to. So um, we can keep scrolling down. There's an option for a, a Maria database with my or MySQL. Uh, same thing here. This is all running in command line. Uh, so if we just keep scrolling down a little further, uh, that right here we'll run into this Docker Compose file right here. This code uh, right here. <clears throat> well, the first thing we'll notice this is this is version three. Uh, currently, uh, Portainer doesn't support version three, though there are, there's rumor that version three uh, support is coming in the newest version of uh, Portainer that's coming out here very soon. Uh, so that's actually pretty exciting, but uh, we can actually modify this a little bit. I've already done that, in fact, uh, to work with version two. So uh, let's go over. Uh, to uh, my, my GitHub area here, where I've gone ahead and modified this just a little bit, uh, not too much actually. Um, uh, I changed it to version two, like you see up here. Uh, below that, I modified the domain name. Again, we're gonna need a domain name for this, and we're actually gonna touch on that next. <clears throat> uh, below that, we've got uh, the, the server name, whatever you wanna call your server. Uh, I, I mapped uh, a different port from port, from port 80. Uh, we're already, already using port 80, so we can't use that. So I just picked another random port there. I also uh, mapped some volumes here uh, for where things will be downloaded, uh, as well as uh, where uh, the, the database will live on our servers. Uh, so you wanna make sure that you map those to correct locations on your server. Um, but before we go any further with this, let's actually jump over to Cloudflare and make sure that we get our domain name pointed over to our server. So the first thing we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna pick whatever our domain name is here. We're gonna create a C rec or a C name record here. Uh, I'm gonna call this Walla, because I'm super original like that. My host or my target here is going to be at, 
So we can see that our domain name will be walla, in my case, .dbtech.click. Now what we wanna do is check this so that it's DNS only and click save. <clears throat> So our, our, this way, this can kind of run in the background and do what it needs to do um, while we're doing everything else. So uh, what we'll do is we'll come over here. I'm just going to click raw. This will be available in the description down below. Uh, so I'm just going to grab this I'm gonna jump over to Portainer here. I'm going to go to uh, stacks. Uh, I'm going to add a new stack and I'm just going to paste that in there. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to copy this to give it a name. So at this point, um, this is set up and ready to go. Uh, just to kind of run through this, we're going to use uh, a MySQL database in order to make this run. Um, and, and this is all the connection stuff to make that work. Uh, below that, uh, there's some mailer stuff. We're not gonna worry about mailer stuff for right now. Um, and again, uh, we've got um, the email. Again, that, that stuff we're not gonna worry about. The domain name we already talked about. Uh, the site name we've already talked about. So basically all we've gotta do at this point is scroll down and click on deploy the stack. So uh, that went pretty quick. I already had all the images downloaded, so I cheated a little. Uh, so let's come over here and click Walla Bag. We can see that we've got a database, we've got a Redis container, as well as the application itself. So let's click right here and nothing's gonna happen. So what we wanna do is come over to here and uh, see what's going on. Right now it's, it's starting a provisioner. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hang out and wait for this to do its thing. And then uh, once it's done, then we should be able to go back and uh, reload uh, this page and have something happen, which what it should do is give us a, a login page that looks like garbage, but we'll come back to that. Okay, so here we are a couple of minutes later. Here is that garbage login page that I was talking about. And again, it, it looks like this because we're not serving it over an SSL connection. So let's fix that next. Uh, what we're gonna do is jump over to Nginx Proxy Manager, and we're going to create a new proxy host. Uh, we're gonna, again, we're gonna call this walla.dbtech, oops, dot click. Uh, I'm gonna put in the IP address of my server, and then the port. We're gonna go ahead and block common exploits. Then we're gonna jump over to SSL. We're going to request a new SSL. Check these boxes here and click save. Okay, so here we can see that we've got our, uh, our walla.dbtech.click. So let's go ahead and click on that. And we're getting a little closer here. So what we wanna do is actually come over to here and uh, edit this. We're gonna go back over to SSL. We're gonna force uh, those two again. Sometimes with this, you've gotta just go back and recheck those boxes. Uh, then what we can do is actually come back over to Cloudflare and switch this from DNS only to proxied and click save. And then let's go ahead and refresh this. There we go. So now we've got our little padlock up here. Uh, we've got our, our login URL. This looks like what it should look like. So now let's go back over to here um, and grab our credentials to log in. Oops. Just want to grab this like so. And then we'll come back over. We're gonna paste that in there, paste that in there, and click log in. And there we go, now we're set up, we're ready to go. Um, so now you can start digging through here and figure out what it is you wanna do. Uh, what, if you wanted to, we could come up here, click a new entry, or add a new entry rather, but I tell you what, let's do this. Um, and then let's just, let's just go to uh, my blog that I haven't updated in a really, really long time, but now it's October it looks like. I'm just gonna grab this, oops. And I'm just gonna paste this right in there. I'm gonna click enter on my keyboard. And right there. Now we have saved that web page uh, to use later. So uh, that's all it takes to get Walla Bag set up. Uh, unfortunately, this one does require an SSL, which means a domain name, unless you've got your own uh, certificate authority on your server, uh, I'm a pretty good chance you don't. So a domain name is definitely the way to handle this. Just took us a few minutes to get this set up and running, and it's very, very easy to use. So uh, thanks to everybody who, who reached out and asked me to uh, to make this video. Uh, I hope this video is helpful for you guys, as well as everybody else watching. Uh, again, all of the resources you'll need will be available in the description down below. And of course, while you're down there, there are some other things that you could take a look at. If you wanted to support the channel, like channel memberships, uh, that's right below this video. Uh, there's also, uh, you could become a patron if you wanted to do that. Um, and there's also like coffee and things like that if you wanted to support the channel directly. So uh, I think with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.